Welcome to another episode of Talking College Football with J.J. Kitchen. Of course, I'm your host, J.J. Kitchen. Of course, all the Pitt fans, the ACC fans, the Big 12 fans, please, before we get into the video today, exciting one, talking about the predictions for Pitt football and what the record will be this year. We'll break down the schedule today, my thoughts on each one of those games, and what Pitt could be looking at this year. Before we get started, please subscribe to the channel. As always, guys, the channel is growing at a rapid rate because of you guys and what you guys do on a consistent basis. Please subscribe, like the video, comment, share it with your friends. It's always good to get that dialogue and that conversation. I love the conversation with you guys in the comment section when the, when the, uh, when the videos are released. So thank you guys again for always supporting the channel as we continue to grow and give you guys the best content available. Today, we got a good one. The predictions for the Pitt Panthers in 2023, guys. I, for me, this is a this is going to be a good one because I think the the outlier to what this could potentially look like. I think there's going to be games that Pitt takes care of, and there's going to be games that are going to be a little tight in between. We'll see what they look like. But here are going to be my predictions going into the season with what we know what Pitt has returning, but also the new players that are there as well. And I think uh, some Pitt fans will like it. Some Pitt fans may not like it. But these are my opinions so far as we go in after th really three weeks of, of, uh, of camp and what we have so far. Uh, here are my predictions. And we're going to start off with number one, week one, obviously Wofford at Pitt, uh, a little bit of a reunion almost. Uh, Sean Watson, the former offensive coordinator at Pitt from a couple, really three or four years ago, if not more, uh, when Kenny Pickett was here, really starting off um, when Sean Watson took over, uh, was the offensive coordinator here at Pitt. Obviously, it was not a good tenure. Obviously, it was let go, uh, really bounced around a little bit. Uh, actually, was the offensive coordinator uh, last year for Wofford, while Josh Conklin, the former defensive coordinator for Pitt, was the head coach. Uh, he was relieved of his duties because of the constant struggles Wofford has faced. They've now hired Sean Watson. Um, we'll see what that continues to look like. But uh, game one, guys, I think this is like more of like a preseason warm-up for Pitt. I really don't see anything that could put potentially put them behind the back burner. I think Wofford has a lot of struggles um, in terms of what the talent level looks like. Obviously, you look at these two rosters, two completely different rosters in terms of where these teams are going. Pitt, obviously, trajectory flying forward. Uh, Wofford really trying to get on its footing, really trying to recreate itself after letting go of their head coach last year. This one right here, guys, I have as a W uh, for Pitt. Going into week two, guys, um, this is going to be where the real the, the season really starts. And I think personally, when you look at this, I think when you look at this schedule as it goes, um, you know, you look at this schedule, Cincinnati, a team that just let go, and preferably, I think, was honestly a questionable hire. Um, I, I look at the schedule here right now. Um, you, you look at obviously Scott Satterfield coming in, Luke Fickle leaving, going to Wisconsin. Um, the Scott Satterfield hire was a little bit of a question mark for me. Um, I think when you look at this from a perspective of, you know, where this team is going, where they were, they lost a lot in the transfer portal. Um, I think their defense, Cincinnati's defense will be, uh, they're, they're one of their, uh, uh, brighter points. Their defensive line should still be good with the amount of talent they have returning. Um, I just want to see what this team does on a basis of really with the new coaching staff. What is it going to look like? Uh, Scott Satterfield, obviously, with the, the strange thing to me, Scott Satterfield was really on the way out um, at Louisville. It was really a guy that was really being set to get fired, and Cincinnati hires a guy like this. I'm a little concerned, a little shocked by that. I think it's going to be a little bit of a a little bit of a shock. I think the two offenses and the two defenses that these guys will run um, will be completely different. Um, I think Cincinnati's going to have a lot of learning to do, and I think their their talent level right now, because of all the transfers, the graduation rate. It's just going to be too much. You know, obviously, too, it's a game in Akershire Stadium, guys. I, I think the way Pitt will handle this game is like is like a veteran leadership team should, and Pitt will get that win. So I have right now Pitt at 2-0. and oh. Now going into the game that everyone is going to be thinking about going into the season, week three, uh, the backyard brawl, uh, West Virginia and Pitt. Pitt going down to Morgantown for the first time since, uh, I, believe it was, I believe it was 2010 or 2011 was the last time Pitt was down there. Guys, this will be a very heated game. Uh, I think the players, from everything I've been told and from the from talking to some of the players, they understand what the environment's like down there. But at the same time, though, you know, Pitt's played in some really high-level uh, environments, some hostile environments. So Neyland Stadium, when they were down there, you know, two years ago, I think was a really big one, and, and Pitt came came out victorious in that game. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of different guys in the field there, but there are plenty of guys returning from those games. 
Um, you know, I, I think when you look at uh, this team where Pitt is, um, it's a veteran leadership team. I, I think Phil Dracovic will continue to see what he looks like. Um, I have high hopes for him because of the return of him to Pittsburgh. I think he feels a lot better here. Uh, the offensive line play will be a lot better than what Boston College had previously had when he was out there. But obviously, too, Frank Signetti, uh, just the, the familiarity, the comfort they're going to have with this team. Uh, guys, I, I personally believe it's going to be a tight game down there. I really do. But when you look at these two teams, you know, Neil Brown really fighting for his job, um, the the amount of withdrawals and the uh, the transfers from West Virginia, they did bring in some talent, um, again, from group of five teams, which I think is a little bit of a concern. Again, they did that the previous year. It certainly didn't work out. Um, I don't think it's going to work out again this year. Uh, Neil Brown, obviously, the, the West Virginia Mountaineers facing Penn State week one, Duquesne week two. Pitt's going to have a good bit of tape. Uh, from each one of those games, more from the Penn State game. They'll be able to see what they're doing. I expect Garrett Green to be the starter going into uh, into this game for West Virginia. Um, but, guys, I think it's going to be close, but Pitt's going to win this game. Uh, you look at the two rosters, I think it's very easy to understand that uh, Pitt has more talent. Pitt has more talent. It's just about Pitt going in there and really proving itself. Um, but I think when you have leaders like Rodney Hammond, a guy that's not even concerned about NIL, consistently talks about on the field how it's about football for him. It's about football. And I think, you know, you, you look at the leadership from from the perspective of where Pitt's at. Guys, I just think it's a veteran team. Devin Danielson, David Green, guys like that. Uh, Dayon Hayes. There's a lot of leadership. Shane Simon. These guys will be more than prepared, especially for the, the, the ride down there. There's no flight. Just a drive. Nice, good 45-minute hour drive down to Morgantown. The way I see this is. Pitt's going to take care of business and going to, going to get the victory. And it'll be 3-0 to start the season. Uh, a huge victory with the backyard brawl, obviously, um, you know, leaving the Mountaineers possibly really in, 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 the, in the realm of 1-2. and two. I think it would be a huge victory. And it leads into week four, okay? Coming back home, North Carolina at Pitt. Um, you know, again, you look at this game. This was a really tough one um, for me to predict. Um, you know, I, I look at these two teams. You know, obviously UNC with Drake May, uh, Mac Brown, obviously, you know, in terms of being able to build somewhat of consistency on the offensive side of the ball. Um, but the concerns that I have about North Carolina uh, in, in this instance is their defense. You know, what is their defense going to look like? Gene Chizik, the defensive coordinator at North Carolina, really hasn't got unstable footing. They've had a number of different transfers on the way out, uh, guys that were highly ranked guys that were on the way out that couldn't perform there. One of the guys that I'm thinking of currently right now is Tony Grimes, the, uh, the cornerback who eventually left uh, North Carolina from this past season. You know, it's going to be tough to beat North Carolina because of what Drake May has done and the level of competition that they have there, the talent that they have there on the offensive side of the ball. But at the same time, though, they're bringing in a new offensive coordinator. Phil Longo is no longer um, with the with the North Carolina Tar Heels now that he's actually up at Wisconsin with Luke Fickle. Um, but the way that I look at this game, guys, um, believe it or not, I'm actually going to put this one at a loss. And, you know, I, I think this was really back and forth for me because I think I want to know what their defense is like. Um, you know, I, I think in a way, you know, Pitt could have won this game last year. Uh, when you look at this team, uh, I think you look at it from a perspective of when these guys get together, it's always a, it's always a tough battle. Um, you know, they, I think Pitt should have won last year, um, but really UNC broke it apart whenever Slovis couldn't get it together. Um, so when I look at this, honestly, I think with the young safeties, uh, I think there may be some learning curves. Uh, this is the first real test of an offense that looks just really, really good and sound, I think. Even with a new offensive coordinator, I think Drake May can hide a lot of that stuff because he's going to be a Heisman candidate, you know, in my opinion. Um, you know, he'll be battle tested. Week one, they'll be facing South Carolina uh, down in Charlotte. So I think personally, this one, I'm going to be reserved this one and really give them a loss with this one and really putting them at three and one. The next game, week five at Virginia Tech. Um, you know, guys, I think at this point, Virginia Tech's got a lot to really work on. I think Brent Pry. Um, I think he could potentially be the best hire that Virginia Tech can get. Um, but if you saw the ESPN article from this week, you know, they have a lot of a lot of ground to make up. And, and Justin Fuente and what they did, uh, it, it's just it's really bad, guys. Uh, I think Virginia Tech is, is still really three or potentially four years behind before when we really see them even really compete back in the ACC again. He's got a long road to go. Um, it could be sooner with uh, with the transfer portal in terms of guys they bring in, um, but this is not that year. I think Brent Pry has a long way to go. Uh, there's a very big talent gap between these two teams. 
Um, you know, I see Pitt really taking care of business in Acrisure Stadium. So, you know, after five weeks, I really have Pitt at four and one. Uh, four and one, which is huge. You know, you, you know, week five, obviously, you know, you go into the bye week, you know, it, it, at this point, guys, at Virginia, you know, when you beat Virginia Tech, you go into a bye week. When you're sitting at four and one, I, I think you got to be pretty happy. And at four and one, you know, the, 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 the bye week's a little earlier than what I would like. Um, but, you know, hey, the bumps and bruises, Pitt can really work itself in those in that bye week, being able to to really look at the next opponent, which would be Louisville, uh, get healthy, guys that potentially have the bumps and bruises. But when you look at the season, the way it goes, when you're sitting currently right now at four and one, um, you got to be happy about it. You got to be happy about Pitt where they are. They'll be ranked at this point. Four and one will certainly get you a ranking because UNC will be ranked. Um, even though it's a loss there, I have there, they're still going to be ranked at this point. So you have a four and one record, you only lost to a ranked opponent. I think Pitt, if more one, will be ranked. Uh, going into week seven, uh, uh, this is going to be a, another another game. Uh, you know, Louisville, they have people is, you know, Louisville being, I guess, is a sneak pick, you know, really in, in terms of what this could potentially look like. Um, you, you know, guys, I, I think when you look at it, you still have Jeff Brom coming home. I understand that reunion. They had a ton of transfers go out. Obviously, they had a ton of transfers come in. I think there's a good bit of talent that they brought in. But when you look at this from a perspective of where the two teams are and you're going into week seven, I think they'll, they'll help out a little bit. But I think when you look at Pitt, for instance, I like where the offense is headed this year. I like where the defense is headed this year. I think the defensive line room is going to be good for Pitt. I think the linebacker room is going to be good for Pitt. The cornerback room, the safeties is where I kind of have a little bit of a concern because you have some newer guys on the block. Um, you know, I think Javon McIntyre will, will be the best DB that Pitt has, but we'll continue to see what they look like. Um but I have, honestly, this was a tough one, but I have Pitt taking care of business um, with against Louisville. With Louisville coming to Pitt, I, I think you know Pitt does take care of business. They go off to five and one after the bye week. They have that extra week to prepare uh, for Louisville. So they're, they're really, they're sitting at five and one. Then you go into Wake Forest, guys. Um, I think that when you look at this game, Wake Forest, they lost, you know, Hartman to, to Notre Dame. Um I personally believe that that's a big loss. They had a number of different guys leave. They'll have some good returners coming back. It'll be at Wake Forest. But again, you look at the two rosters, I just personally believe with how much they lost, I think there's a lot of question marks there, especially the quarterback position when you look at Dave Clawson's team and what they could potentially bring this year. Um, so I have this as a W for Pitt. Um, and I think after week eight, they'll really be six and one, six and one. Again, guys, Pitt's going to be ranked six and one, which is a huge, huge, huge uh, advantage for Pitt being after week eight, being six and one. Now you have Pitt at Notre Dame guys. I think six and one, both teams, I think could potentially be ranked if, if Notre Dame takes care of business like they should. Um, this is going to be a tough one, guys. This is going to be in South Bend. Um, I, I think that this is going to be one where it's going to be a tough battle. I think it'll be close. Uh, these two teams really kind of run the same offense in terms of the of uh, pro style offense. Uh, it'll be controlling the clock. Um, I, I really don't believe it'll be a uh, you know, a barn burner in terms of what the this does the point spread will be. Um, both of these teams will be ranked, but I'm going to give Notre Dame the edge because it's in South Bend. I, I really do. I think it's going to be a lot closer. This could, this could potentially be a flip game, and there's a number of games on this schedule that could be a flip game. But me personally, I have them. Um, losing this game. And I, I, the only reason why is I give it a little bit of an edge to their playing out in South Bend. So that leaves Pitt at six and two. Here comes Florida State. And this is the, the barn burner of the schedule for Pitt, Notre Dame, now Florida State. Um, you know, Florida State at Pitt, guys, Florida State's a very talented team. Um, you know, obviously ranked number seven uh, going into this season, uh, one spot ahead of Clemson on the AP top 25. They lost a lot of guys, but they did bring in some really good players, you know, between, you know, the the, the players they've brought in in terms of the talent level. Obviously, they brought in a wide receiver from, from uh, Michigan State, their top wide receiver that was still left there, Coleman. Um, they still have Jordan Travis coming back. We'll continue to see what that looks like. I think, you know, Florida State really needs to prove it this year. Um, but we'll continue to see what that looks like. But I want to see what Florida State does. in this time, week 10 is going to be certainly going to be cold. We'll continue to see what that looks like. but. Here's the crazy part, guys. Pitt is a team that then they rise up to the occasion on how many different times they face these teams. And I, from talking to some of these players, especially you saw in the Marquez Williams interview, that the game that he's really looking forward to the most is Florida State. Florida State obviously making a lot of noise this year, um, potentially in terms of what this could look like 
guys, I, you know, they, they kind of have a, they've kind of got the, 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 the target on their back per se, when you look at this team. And I think when you look at this, this is going to be a game that it's going to be, I think it'll be a lot closer than what people think. Um, I think the, 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 from a national perspective, more people than not would have um, Pitt losing this game because of the Florida state talent level. And they think, you know, the talent level back and forth, what it looks like. And, you know, they, they think Florida state really has a lot more talent with Jordan Travis, a good returning offensive line for, for Florida state. But I, I'll tell you what, the, the one advantage I do give Pitt, if this was at Florida state and then Tallahassee, I would say this would be a, a, a definite loss. I think because of that, you know, being at home, you're playing in, you know, in front of that home crowd, uh, it's rowdy. It's very, it's very enticing. It's, it's wild down there. But this is week 10. And I think that when you look at how Pat Narduzzi's team, you know, I really struggled with this one. But when you look at how Pat Narduzzi's team, Pitt's going into the season with a five game winning streak. It's almost like the end of the year, Pitt really starts to figure things out and starts getting on a trend. At the beginning of this, when I was looking at the schedule, I had this as a loss and I thought it was going to be tight. But you look at the previous seasons, what Pitt has done at the end of the year, Pitt goes on a run every year towards the end of the year, especially from last year with five wins in a row. And then you top it off, you beat UCLA with, you know, with the guys that didn't play all year and UCLA was ranked 18th in the country. Guys, I'm putting this one as a win and people are going to, you know, I, I know I'm going to have the Florida state people in my DMS. There's no way Pitt's going to beat Florida state guys. Pitt's really the, in my opinion, the guaranteed third best team in this conference tight with, with UNC. I think UNC could be up there because, you know, Drake May is going to be a, a really big time Heisman candidate. So you could put UNC and Pitt really in the same spot, but I have this as a W. So after week 10, you know, I've got Pitt at seven and two, you know, seven and two, obviously with the bye week. So they played nine games, seven and two leading into week 11. Uh, let's see here. Week 11, they have Syracuse. Um, guys, I have, I have this as a W. I think Dino Babers hasn't survived this year. Um, you know, Garrett Schrader uh, is going to be the quarterback from Syracuse this year. I think there's a lot of potential there. They've talked a lot about a camp, you know, his swagger, his confidence coming into this season. But you, you look at the roster. I looked at back and forth. I mean, Pitt has the better roster. And if Pitt beats Florida State, this is a, a, a very much a trap game for Pitt because then if you, you lost Notre Dame, you beat Florida State at home, you're going to the, you know, you're going to the dome up in Syracuse. This is certainly a possible trap game. But I think Pitt takes care of business. I think they're a veteran enough team that they should be able to take care of business, and they win this game. So after week eleven, I have Pitt at uh, at eight and two, eight and two right now. So they'll certainly be ranked because you beat Florida State. I think if they take care of business the way they should, that's a ranked win. Um, I think this will be another win. So after you know week eleven with a bye week, ten games played, I think Pitt will be eight and two at this point. Then Boston College at Pitt. The return, you know, you'll see uh, Frank Signetti and, and Phil Dracovic facing off. I think Phil Dracovic's going to play this game extremely well um, because to show a little bit of revenge, obviously uh, Emmett Moorhead, the the quarterback that really took over for Boston College last year, um, you know, I, I think the way that ended, you know, people really put that on Phil, but you know, the offensive line play at Boston College was absolutely horrendous. I thought their defense wasn't good either. You know, they had times last year where you know, you know, Phil really had to put the team on the back on their on his back and really didn't play well because of the, of, uh, the amount of pressure. Had the most pressure faced in the of any quarterback in the ACC. Um, but I had this one as a W. I think Pitt finally takes care of business. Um, you know, from the last two times Pitt has faced Boston College. It was two losses, two losses that should have never happened. I think they take care of business because, one, I think Phil has a hell of a day. Frank Signetti puts the foot down, really uh, scores some points. I think that the defense, the veteranship that they'll have there, they take care of business. So Pitt, now after week 12, sits at 9-2. and two. Goes into our last game. The trap game, in my opinion. The actual trap game. Pitt at Duke. Guys, I really like what Mike Elko has done down there. I think he's a tremendous coach. Uh, he has a quarterback in Riley Leonard. Uh, I think he's a really good quarterback, to say the least. Um, and they have talent down there. They really do. Do I think it's the level of talent that Pitt has? No, I don't. Um, th that's what concerns me. You know, you, you go down to, to you go down to Duke and where it's, you know, it's not going to be as cold. You're, you're leaving the cold weather up here. It's going to be a little bit warmer down there. You're kind of feeling good about yourself. But Pitt still, still takes care of victory. They take care of business. Guys, if you look at the schedule the way I have it now, then is after week 13, Pitt's 10 and 2. Guys, I think this is more of a veteran team. I, I think that when you look at Pitt's schedule, okay, I, 
you can't you can't look at this from a perspective of you know what is it what does it look like um in terms of uh the amount of talent that all these teams have and pit always pit fans always say to me you're gonna have one game a year that pitch shouldn't lose the pitch shouldn't lose pitch shouldn't be losing to these teams they'll have one team every year it doesn't matter um you know I, guys in my opinion i just don't think it i don't think it happens i, I really don't and when you look at this, it's funny. I'm looking at it right now. I'm, I'm going back from all my notes here. You know, let's see here. All my notes between all these teams. I just don't see. I just think this team's a veteran veteran enough. You have the Marquez Williams. You have the MJ Devonshire. You have uh, you have Phil Trakovic. You have Rodney Hammond. I think Rodney Hammond's going to be, I mean, I would be shocked if he's not voted a captain this year. I would be absolutely shocked. Um, because of how good these guys are. Um, let's see here. Yeah, Rodney Hammond. I think Bob Means, the way that he has played this year, overall, when you look at this team, uh, I'm going I'm going 10 and 2. Um, some people are going to be saying, hey, it's a, it's a little, it's a little skeptical. Um, in my opinion, I think Pitt Ceiling was 10 and 2 uh with, with the teams that I had on here. I think their floor, I think their floor in general is eight and four. That's my floor. So the the height is ten and two. The floor is eight and four. Some people would think it's nine and three. I battled on that, um, and I guys, it, I went back and forth for a while on this because I was back between ten and two and nine and three, and the nine and three really dealing with the Florida State game, I, the potentially being a loss. I think it's going to be in between there. But as a as a as a guy that looks at it right now, when you look at the team's healthy and whatnot, I think it's I think it's ten and two. I, I really do. I think because the second year in the offense, the the things that I've heard at camp. Uh, the offense really taking a step forward. I think Kenate Mumfield's going to take a major step forward. Bob Means will take a major step forward. Uh, Dejon Reynolds. And then you're going to see Kenny Johnson uh, potentially be a starter as the season goes on. He's had a hell of a camp. Zion Fowler. You know, those are going to be, you know, Day Day Reynolds. Um, those are going to be your five wide receivers. I think that Malcolm Epps will be a good uh, red zone target. Uh, you know, Bartholomew will have a really good year. I think the offensive line will be solid if they stay healthy. Um they have some guys that will be swing guys, you know, to pet the, potentially what the what the battle looks like right now. Everything I've heard is that more than likely Ryan Jacoby will be the uh, the left guard, it looks like. Um, and then you'll have Ryan Bayer, who will be able to be the backup at both tackle spots. You know, I, I just you look at this team, and I wouldn't be shocked if B.J. Williams is a guy who's going to be potentially be the backup center for Pitt. I look at this team. I look at the veteranship. Um there's a lot of belief in what this team, because you saw what they did in, in 2021, the ACC championship game. There's certainly some tough teams here. Okay. Since he might have a new coach, still a power five team. Okay. And, and pitch one of one, I think one of three teams that plays 11 power five games this year. That's a lot. That's a lot compared to anybody else, more than anybody else in the sec, the big 10, you name it. You know, it's really ACC teams or the big 12 teams that are they're facing 11 power five, uh, power five teams. So when I look at this, guys, I think that there's just a lot of veteranship again. I think the leadership, the leadership will be there. The quarterback play will be better. And I think, and I will say this too, let's say that Phil Dracovic somehow gets hurt. Guys, I, I cannot begin to tell you how happy I am when I look at the quarterback room. Phil Dracovic, Christian Veyu, and then uh, Nate Yarnell. Guys, those are three, three really good quarterbacks. If, if Pitt didn't have... Um, if Pitt didn't have a backup quarterback that was at least somewhat solid, then I probably would have had nine and three because maybe potentially Dracovic gets hurt. And then the Florida state game gets tough. And, you know, the Duke game could get tough because of the talent level down there. It's at home down at Duke. We'll continue to see what that looks like. But in my heart of hearts, I have Pitt at 10 and two guys, as always, please let me know what you think. What is Pitt's record going to be? I have 10 and two. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? What games do you maybe have flip flopped? Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Again, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends. I love the dialogue. Again, we continue to grow because of you. You guys are the best when it comes to growing this channel. It's It would never be like this unless it was for you guys. So again, thank you guys for what you guys do. As, as always, to the ACC fans and the Pitt fans, I'll see you soon. And of course, hail to Pitt.